The Trap, 1988 by Jack Tichik. Darling, only the rich and famous are invited to our parties. With the exception of my husband's brother, Max, I'm sorry to say. Oh look, there's the ambassador, and look who's with him. Marsha, this is Robert. He has a special gift. Oh, what's that? There's a spirit entity named Seth who speaks through me when I'm in a trance. This is called chance channeling. I am a channel or instrument through which the spirit speaks. Seth is a highly evolved soul who is not currently in a human body. He is extremely wise. Seth is a demon. Oh, please, can you talk to my husband? He needs spiritual insight. Well, yes, but I don't work for money. I only want to help people. May I give you a gift of $25,000 for your work? But why would I need a channeler? Because Seth has so much wisdom and he can tell you about your past lives. Are you telling me I've lived more than once? The cycle of reincarnation never ends. You choose to be born into this life to solve problems from your past life. Seth can help you. What? How do you know Seth is a good spirit? He could pretend to be good when he is really evil. Oh, but Seth only teaches about love, just as Jesus did. In fact, he is an ascended master just like Jesus. Seth is a liar because Jesus never taught reincarnation. In fact, he warned us about people like you. He said, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening, ravening wolves. Matthew 7.15 It's time for me to go meditate. Why did you say that, Max? Charlie, let me tell you the story of another rich man. This is not a parable. Listen carefully. Then you tell me if reincarnation is real or not. This is a true story told by the greatest man ever who ever lived. Jesus said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Ha ha, there is no finer table anywhere. Burp, I know my brother. And fared sumptuously every day. Luke sixteen nineteen. Why doesn't my brother chase that filthy beggar away? God bless you. He's an embarrassment to us all. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Luke 16.20 To stay alive, all Lazarus wanted was the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Luke 16.21 And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died yeah, and was buried. Luke 16, 22. He never dreamed what was coming. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Luke sixteen twenty three. The rich man cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Luke 16.24 But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Luke sixteen twenty-five and 26. 
Was it all over for the rich man? Was there no hope? The rich man begged Abraham to send Lazarus to his father's house to talk to his five brothers. Please, Father Abraham. He wanted Lazarus to go back and warn them so his brothers wouldn't end up in this awful place. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. The rich man argued and told Abraham, If one went on to them from the dead, they will repent. Luke 16.30 And Abraham said, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. 16.31 Luke 16.31 That's a true story? Absolutely. The Lord Jesus Christ himself told it. Then according to the word of God, reincarnation is a lie. Yes, Charlie, it's one of Satan's traps to give millions of souls a false hope. Look at what God says happens after death. The Bible says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. James 14.4 4, 4, 14. He was so good. Sniff. The Bible says, It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 Max, are you telling me God is going to judge us after we die? Charlie, the Bible says, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Matthew twelve thirty six. Then our lives are being recorded, my life. Of course, Charlie. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest, revealed in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hebrews 4.13 I don't like this. I think I'm in deep trouble. You are, Charlie. You really are. Now, Max, I've done a lot of good things. I've helped various charities. I know God will weigh all the good things I've done against the bad. Isn't that the way it works, Max? Sorry, Charlie. Here are two scriptures that blow the thinking out of the water. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 That makes me sick. What about that rich man in the story? Is he still in torment? Of course. He's been there for 2,000 years. And he will be there for eternity. In fact, the Bible says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Revelation 14.11 In that story, he could think. He was thirsty, and he worried about his relatives. He felt pain, and he remembered everything. And it's all true? Am I going to hell, Max? You don't have to, Charlie. God made a way of escape for you. It says in the Bible that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3.9 That's why the Lord Jesus came to this earth and died for your sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3.17 The bottom line is, Charlie, he that believeth on him, Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3.18 That channeler gave you the teaching of the new agers. They lie saying there are many paths to God. They even quote Jesus, but they overlook his words in John 14, 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you don't go through Jesus Christ, Charlie, this is what you will see.
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Revelation 20.12 Open the book of life. Is Charles' name there? The angel opens the book and says, His name does not appear, Lord. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20.15 Max, what must I do to be saved? Charlie, you must repent and turn to God. Believe that the Lord Jesus died for you, and by faith, trust him as your personal savior. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I repent and turn to you. I trust you as my personal savior. Now, your name is in the book of life, Charlie. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Isaiah 118. Max, what would God say to me if I died tonight? He would say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Matthew twenty five twenty one. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Nobody else can save you. Trust Jesus today.